What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all come in. Let me let me know who in the building. Thank you, right on. Appreciate that. Got two people, one like, eight people, one like. Hit that like button when y'all come into the chat. And let me know who uh let me know who came in the room. Eric, what's good? What's good? How you doing? Let me go ahead and find a chat on my phone so I could keep up with the comments. Cause that screen right there is little, so let's uh Ready to save at Harbor Freight now through Monday. All right, Charles. So, Any item? No, as soon as we get a couple more people in here, right, so, we gonna we gonna get this thing started. But how you doing, though, Eric? How was your week? Good Friday, huh? Damn, good Friday. Hold on. Finally start up saltwater tank. You may sound easy. Yeah, Eric, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. What size tank did you start? Size tank you start. Nine people, four likes. Let's get them likes up. And what's good with you was good. Yeah, man. Yeah, so the reason why I haven't gone live in like five days was because I was having an issue with um with my camera. Camera wasn't working. Um, I slid in the other fish room, and uh, you know the camera wasn't working. You know it will work for FaceTime, it will work for Zoom, it'll work for iMovie, but it wouldn't work for the for the YouTube. So, you know, finally got it working. Don't know what happened. Start working on its own, and um. I think what I'll do from now on, I'll leave the laptop right here. I think I'm going to do the laptop right here. If we go and film and uh, do a live in the fish room, we're going to use the iPhone. I'm not going to be taking the laptop back and forth. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to keep doing that. That might have been the problem. Oh, yeah, let, me bring this, uh, let me bring this around. Now y'all can really hear me a lot better. But, um, yeah, make sure y'all hit that like button when y'all step into the chat. Babe, what's good with you? How you doing? You over there? Look, you over here joining the live from the bedroom, huh? <laughs> hey, y'all say what's up to Aida for me. Eric, 36 gallon reef, gonna do a 125 fish only starting on started on it tomorrow. That's what I'm talking about. One brings two. One brings two. You can add the aggressive stuff to that, uh, to that 125. Yeah. Yeah, do you have any idea of what you're gonna put in there? What kind of what kind of fish you wanna get? Yeah, happy Easter to you as well, and I appreciate you. And be reef, what's good with you? What's good with you? Tanner Boyle. He answered the question. We got the first person that stepped in and answered the question for tonight's topic. What is the most aggressive cichlid? He said red dovi. Woo! Oh, he said red devil. Correction. The next person said Dovi. My bad. The red Dovi, Dovi. My bad. My bad. So Tanner Doyle, he says red devil. George says Dovi. So um, got two answers. We got two answers. I would say from personal experience, right? You know, I, I'm a Dovi keeper. You know, I can't, I've been keeping Dovi for over 10 years. I'm a Dovi keeper. I stay with a Dovi on hand. Are they the most aggressive fish that I've ever owned? That's a cichlid. I can't really say it's the most aggressive. I can't say it's the most aggressive, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Um, the Buddy Cough Rye. The Buddy Cough Rye. Uh, from my experience, the Buddy Cough Rye is much more aggressive than the Dovi. The Dovi gets bigger, and if you put them two in the same tank, the Dovi will win. But the buddy cough rye, the zebra tilapia, is much more aggressive than that dovi for sure. They're maniacs. They're insane. You know what I mean? They're really people say, "Oh, they're killing machines." They literally will attack everything nonstop, no matter what you do. You know what I mean? Until you find that correct balance. You know, Eric is yes, there, not really sure on the fish yet. Still deciding. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, it's all good. At least you know you're gonna set up George. You on point. You set this. You set the buddy car fry, and uh, yeah, that's your second. Yeah, that's my first. The second would probably be. Man, I know everybody want me to say Dovi. I know everybody think Dovi, Dovi, Dovi. Um, I guess, I guess I could say the Dovi. Yeah, the Dovi is the second. Yeah, yeah. Then Red Devil is my third. Cody, what's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? Happy Friday, everybody. I hope, happy, I hope everybody had a good week. I hope everybody had a good week. I hope y'all plan on having a better weekend. Um, you know, we went through some losses the other day with Bard and, you know, losing fish sucks. So, uh, you know, uh, hopefully nobody had to deal with that this past week. Hopefully you, uh, you know, you get those water changes done this weekend. If you got to get it done, still have time to enjoy the tanks, enjoy life, things like that. But, um, yeah, I hope everybody had a cool week. You know, prayers to them over there in Baltimore, that bridge falling down. That was a crazy situation. I'm not trying to get too far off topic, but, you know, just want to make sure that, you know, we talk. But, um, yeah, so Bennett Boyle says bass are the most aggressive. No, they not. No, they not. No, no, Tanner. Bass are not the most aggressive. Not at all. I can't even put the bass in the in the pond with my dovine buddy, Carl Fry and Red Devil. They'll kill him. So unless you're talking about, like, largemouth bass, and, again, you still can't put those inside of the tank with, you know, with my, with my dovine and Red Devil. You can't do that. Yeah, bass aren't bass aren't aggressive. Yeah, they did just eat things because they got a big mouth, but they're not aggressive. Sorry. Try to come again. Come again. Come with another one. Wolf cichlid. So we talking about so C Wood says the wolf cichlid. So he's talking about the dovi. Okay, so we got second person for the dovi. All right, all right. Cody, I agree with Tanner. Bass are super aggressive. Cody, you're wrong too. You're wrong too. What are you talking? You cannot put those in the same tank with Dovi's Red that was a buddy called Fry. See, will get murdered. It's just facts. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So, nah. Nah. They're really not. They 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 seem aggressive when they're eating. You know what I mean? But if you put them in something with an aggressive fish, yeah. Yeah. So, y'all both wrong. You and Cody and Tanner, y'all both wrong. Sorry. I, I fool with y'all, but y'all wrong. Make sure y'all hitting that like button one time. We got 23 people in the building. We only got 14 likes. I know we could get them likes up. Come on now. Nine more people. What's going on with that? Uh, we see, I see the umby cichlid. I mean, the umby cichlid. Never had, I've had an umby. And they got, and they got, they got, uh, got KIA by Red Texas. So the umby is definitely not the most aggressive cichlid. I know this opinion based. So I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to put down y'all opinion. You know, I asked for it. But, you know, just having, with us having this conversation, Umby Cichlid is definitely not one of the most aggressive cichlids. It's a big one, though. You get big for sure. But as far as aggression, no, nah, not far as aggression, though. And I have a 20-gallon with only two glass catfish. What can I add? I don't know. Anthony, a 20-gallon, you could probably add some Tetris. Add you some cool little, little Cardinal Tetris, Remy Notes Tetris. You can add some um you can add some Danios, you know what I mean? You can add some some Rasbor, you know, you can add some small stuff. Yeah. Hey the answers. You just name hey, 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 man. Hey George, you just name it fish now, man. Just name it fish. Now the Hey the answers does get big. The Nandops is black nasty for those for those of you that know him, you know, under that term. The Hey the answers definitely can be aggressive, but when we're talking about aggressive fish, all right, let, let me let me just switch it up because y'all just name it fish, and I you know y'all just name it stuff. Uh, let me uh, let me uh, tap in with a few of the people that just came into the room. Aloy, what's good with you? How you doing? Um, Janika, hey, what's up? What's up? I'm glad you finally caught the live. Hope you're doing good. Uh, who else we got? All right, all right, Tracy, Tracy. He says, my most aggressive so far has been a pit. All right, Marie, I'm going to read that out loud. So he says, the parrot, the Midas, and the Vieja since film all were just mean, so I had to rehome. No, you didn't have to, you didn't have to rehome them. You just had to add the correct tank mates with those fish. Those aren't really aggressive fish. They're not. They're not. Um. You know, those are the kind of aggression, aggressive level is maybe an Oscar. 
You know what I'm saying? Like Oscar could be on that. You know, it's levels of aggression. Now, when I'm talking about the most aggressive fish, y'all, I'm talking about the Dovi. I'm talking about the Buddy Coffer. Right? I'm talking about the Red Devil. I'm talking about the Midas Cichlids. Those are four fish. You know, my, Midas and Red Devil is almost the same. But those are four fish that you literally have to cherry pick what fish could go in a tank with those fish. You can't just add in an Oscar. Oscar, out of there. You can't add in the VA house and spill them. Out of there. Red flower horn, out of there. Come on now. The electric blue, out of there. You know, I'm Jack Dempsey, out of there. You know what I mean? Like, you cannot put just any fish with those fish. That's what I mean when I'm saying aggressive. Could you put an umby in there with those fish full grown? Full grown, yeah. Full grown, yeah, you could put an umby in there. But other than that, no. Texas cichlid. Aggressive fish, y'all. Y'all know Texas cichlids are aggressive. Can you put a Texas cichlid in that mix? No. No, you cannot. Eventually, because the Texas cichlids don't get as big or don't grow as fast, out of there. Out of there. And I've done this. I have literally have done this unintentionally over the course of the past 12 years. Um, the Dovi is one of the most biggest, you know, 27 inches full grown, right? Biggest aggressive cichlid, you know, followed by the buddy cough, right? You know, they get quite large, you know, what, 15 inches? Um, let's look at the buddy cough, right? I think about 12 inches, to be honest with you. Uh, but let's, let's look that up. Even a Jaguar cichlid, the Jaguar cichlid, I would throw in a tank with, I would throw that in a tank with like the V8 Hassan Spillum, the Red Texas, right? I would throw it in there with those kind of fish. You know what I'm saying? So let's see how big the buddy cough fry get. But, you know, uh, I still see people in in like the uh the chats on on uh on Facebook and they constantly say you cannot keep the buddy cough fry with any other fish and things like that. Man, that's not the case. How big do they get? 12 inches. So the buddy cough fry only gets 12 inches. The zebra tilapia, y'all. If y'all don't know what that fish is. Everybody want to call it the murdering machine, right? Uh, well, I have two murdering machines in the pond right now with a bunch of other fish, and I've always kept them with other fish. But over the years, I've learned what this fish will attack on sight. They hate Oscars. I don't give a, I don't care. They hate Oscars. Um, flower horns, they don't like them. You know what I mean? And when I say they don't like them, I got, I've been able to add fish in there. Y'all look, y'all seen the pond. I got fry in there. I got uh, small red Atabapo pikes in there. I got hybrids in there. No problem whatsoever. I throw in Drax. Drax is at least 11 inches. Got to get him out of there ASAP. ASAP. And I'm talking about it's bad. So um, he's, he'd, never touch, he'd never touch a tank or an enclosure with that buddy cough rod. And the same thing when I had the Dovi in there. There's certain fish that the Dovi just didn't like. You know what I mean? I put him in as a problem. Um, the VA has since spill them. I never was able to put them in there. Every time I put them in there, got to get them out. Got to get them out. Um, so there's certain Jack Dempsey, nice size Jack Dempsey. Put them in there, got to get them out. And these fish, they don't play. They don't play. It's not like how some people say you got to just watch, see how they do, you know, see, let them get used to, used to each other. No. Y'all know when y'all have a 12 inch fish or bigger. They cause damage quick. I mean, fast. It'll kill a fish in minutes. So, you know, and they're smart. They go for the swim bladder. You know what I mean? They go for the eyes, you know, with the Oscars and things like that. So, uh, yeah, when I'm asking you what's the most aggressive fish, I guess I'm talking about what fish do you really believe that you could put in a tank with the top aggressive ones? I mean, I hope we could agree that top five would be, it would not have to be my, this is my order. Don't have to be your order. The Buddy Call Fry. The Dovi, the Red Devil, the Midas Cichlid, and what's another one that's like super aggressive? I really got a top four. I can't even tell you a top five because I feel like that fifth one is the one that got to go down to the, it's a level down. You know what I mean? It's a level down from the top aggressive ones. Um, it's like a touch and go. It's like a touch and go. Oh, pikes are cichlids. The pike. Pick your pike. You know, at a Bapo, Zabrina. Um, lent lenticulata, you know what I mean? Pick your pike. That's a cichlid. So that actually works. That's my top five right there. It's my top five. 
See, Wood, I'm glad somebody said the Trimac. I really want to get a Trimac, but they're not that aggressive, though. Yeah, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? <laughs> yeah, largemouth bass are definitely not cichlids, and they are not even aggressive like that. All right. Uh, we doing good. My wife found a 60-gallon hex, so we about to get... So we just got fish in it, set up and everything. All right, Cody, I'm glad to hear it. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out on TikTok. Pay 60... Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Aratus and Carbo and Crabbo for small cichlids. Yeah. All right. Where else? Where are we else? Check out TTK. We got the catfish to eat. He ate tilapia. So, hard. yeah, we'll definitely, I'll definitely check that out. I've heard the Haitian cichlids are some of the nastiest. So, um, are you you must be talking about like the Hadiensis. Yeah, it's it's it can't I mean I I have one. It got it got it got KIA, you know? Call of Duty kill in action, man. It's the, it it wasn't aggressive. It wasn't aggressive. Beautiful fish, but definitely wasn't aggressive. Cody a Texas sick lit bite so hard he would draw blood. Easy. Trust me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Cody, um Texas cichlids are aggressive. Not the top aggressive, but they are aggressive. Like I said, my red Texas. Inside of the tank, you know, it it, it killed my umby. Um, it killed my other red Texas. It killed um, my electric blue jet. It killed a lot of fish. It killed a lot of fish, and it's still small. But right now, it's in a tank full of smaller fish. I got three red dovi in there with him. I have um, I have my gold garami, my gold giant garami in there with him. I have my small red tiger motor gwens. I have, um, what else? I have a Salvini in there. He picks on the Salvini. I have in there my Madagascar cichlid. So that just lets you know, like, you could put a bunch of different fish with those, with the, with the Texas cichlids. For sure. For sure you can. But, you know, um, you can't really do that with certain fish. You know, you could get a small three-inch buddy coffer, I'm telling you, and throw it in a tank with eight-inch fish. And he's gonna hold his own. I know if you haven't, if you never own a buddy car fry, buy one. They're inexpensive. $4.99, $6.99, get you one. It'll be a game changer for you. Make sure that you do have a tank that you can set up for him in the future, just in case you gotta put him by your, by yourself. If he doesn't if you don't own any other real, you know, apex top dog type cichlids. You know what I mean? You got to make sure you keep it with aggressive cichlids in order to keep a buddy cough rock. No joke. It's a reason why they call it a killer machine. It ain't no joke. No joke. Don't ever try to put that with an Oscar. It'll be a wrap. All right. Where we at? Where we at? Uh, Demika, bro, you do talk about saltwater on certain days. So, if so, what days? If not... I talk about salt. It's, it's really a topic base. I don't really just say, okay, today I'm going to talk salt water. Today I'm going to talk fresh water. It's just all about what I feel like talking about, what I think is going to get people talking. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's really what it's about. If you have a salt water comment, if you want to talk about salt, if you got something that you want to say about salt, that's here. You know what I'm saying? It's not one of those things where you have to stick on topic. You know? So, you know, what you got to say about some salt water? We're not going to go in depth about it though because i you know i'm actually enjoying this conversation but you know if there's something that you want to talk about you know we could definitely talk about it for a second cody my dad had a buddy car with two oscars and had them for a few years yeah um good for him um he got lucky uh it doesn't really happen like that it don't really happen like that so yeah he got lucky you know Zach, was good? Was good? Buddy Carfry all day. I'm trying to tell these people. I'm trying to tell these people. Yeah, man, the Buddy Carfry, no joke. It's no joke. You know, you could keep a Dovi with Oscars, but I wouldn't tell, But I wouldn't recommend that to the masses. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell everybody, hey, this is going to work. I'm going to tell you from experience that that don't really work. I've had Buddy Carfry that ate the eyes off my Oscar. Oscar's still alive. Both eyes gone. You know what I mean? That's crazy, right? It's terrible. Tracy, my, my 
Spice. My Cuban Sigla was pretty aggressive too. He was beautiful though, with the black and white spots. Um, yeah, I'm a Cuban Sigla. I have a I have a female Cuban Sigla, which is throwing me off with the black and white spots though. But um, yeah, it's not really spots on that joint. But yeah, yeah, it's not really spots. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna show the the people a picture of the the male and the female. So hopefully, uh, so the bigger one obviously is the male. The smaller one is the female. The male looks really nice. Um, there's the picture of just a male. Yeah, I I, I kind of call those like the squiggly lines, but yeah, uh, the male is definitely a lot more attractive than the female. All right, uh, what else? What else? Um, uh, gotta get back to work. All right, and I appreciate you if you still here. If you caught, and you know, my apologies for catching that little catching that comment late, but I appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Jay. All right, yeah, thank you so much for that. Got a donation. Um, Cody, I haven't kept many large aggressive fish, but Red Devil Gar and just random South Americans. Um, Cody, South Americans aren't aggressive. They're not aggressive cichlids. You're going to have to go towards the central. Um, the central American cichlids are the, you know, the aggressive ones, you know, when we're talking about cichlids. And, um, yeah, the Red Devil, you had an aggressive one, obviously a Gar, but Gar is not a cichlid. Um. But yeah, once you start really diving into keeping aggressive, all I do is keep aggressive fish. Like that's that's really what I like to keep. And when we're talking about aggressive cichlids, that's all I've kept for the past 12 years. No, I'm good, babe. Thank you. That's all I've kept. That's all I've kept for the past 12 years is aggressive cichlids. Like that's what inspired me to get back into the hobby. That's what really catches my attention. And um, I've done a lot of learning. I've made a lot of mistakes. You know, uh, listening to everybody else, you know, doing foolishness. You know what I mean? The things that we do when we first start off. Right. So at this point, I'm very well versed in tank compatibility with these aggressive large cichlids. You know what I mean? When I first started out, you know, I used to get a lot of crap about me being able to keep Dovi with other fish. Um, that's negligent. That's irresponsible, all these kind of crazy names. They just threw everything at me, hoping that it would stick. But I've been able to keep Dovi with other fish for 12 years straight, consistently. So, and I have had situations where certain fish kill other fish and things like that. And, um, you know, sometimes they hit hard. So you learn from those lessons. You know what I mean? So um, that's why I have the 800 gallon. I have in there fish that they say are killing machines. You know, you can't keep them with nothing. Uh, when my dove eyes grow out, I'm throwing, when they get six, maybe like seven inches, I'm throwing them in there, you know. Hopefully that's going to be, yeah, definitely be bigger than what it is at that point. But I'm throwing them in there with those um, buddy car fry because there's a select few fish that you can successfully keep together. That's top tier. Then lower tier there's a certain select fish that you can keep together. And if you add one of those top top tier fish into that tier, the second tier, problems happen. If you put a dove eye in a tank with um, fish that's like less aggressive, you know, jaguar cichlids get big and, and are aggressive. Not when we're talking about the red devil, buddy coffer eye, things like that. You know, I've seen these fish get, get torn up, torn up over the years. So, you just got to know what fish go well together. When we're talking about size, talking about aggression, we're talking about intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Because if you ever seen like an Oscar fight, it's totally different than when you see like a Dova fight. You know what I mean? Like they are methodical. You know what I mean? Like they go for the swim bladder. Um, they go for the eyes, things like that. You know what I mean? Whereas Oscar is just going to just, you know what I mean? They just attack and, you know, it's just weird. They'll go for the fins. They'll, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, some fish, like, they are really like, you know, it's kind of funny to say it like this, like assassins. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, yeah. Well, let me get back to the comments, man. I apologize. I'm definitely getting a little behind. 
Aloy, what's good? What you say? What are your thoughts on short body fish? I hate, that's a strong word. I strongly dislike short body fish. I have never seen a short body fish that I thought, oh, that's a cool looking fish because it looked different. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like the idea of, of trying to sell a deformed fish. You get what I mean? Like that's almost like the bulldogs. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why their life expectancy is so short because they're obese and things like that. So I don't like short body fish. I want, I like my fish to be the way they're supposed to be. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not ever going to feed into that. I hope that is a trend that quickly passes us up because again, it's, it's, yeah, it just doesn't look right. What do you think about it? Aloy, you tell me what you think about it. What do you think about the short body fish? And y'all, do y'all, what do y'all think about short body fish? Anybody like short body fish in here? Is that something that y'all like? Something that y'all would like to buy? A short body fish? All right, Zach, my buddy at four inches had my large Texas. I'm already liking your comment. I'm already liking your comment. You reiterating and confirming what I'm saying. My buddy at four inches had my large Texas cichlid pair backing down from her while they were defending eggs. Never seen that happen with cichlids ever. Zach. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to explain. Like these buddy coffer eye. If you don't want to get the large, super big dove eye, that gets 27 inches that you probably need a Seven, eight hundred, you know, thousand gallon for could get you a nice buddy car for I get you a 200 gallon aquarium, then it's going to be cool in there, it's going to be good. 240, 225, you'll be cool with one buddy car for in there, or with a couple other fish. But the aggression and the personality that comes from that buddy car for I would you would really appreciate that. I mean, I had one 12 years ago, it was destroying my Oscar. I mean, it was bad. Did the same thing to my Texas cichlid. I take him out. Put my fish on punishment. Don't laugh. Y'all don't put fish on punishment before. I know y'all didn't put fish on punishment. So put the fish on punishment. Threw them inside of a smaller aquarium. It's the first time I've ever seen a fish throw a temper tantrum. I mean, he's grabbing a heater, pushing the heater up, letting it go, pushing the heater up, letting it go, pushing the heater up, letting it go. Like, you know, putting his mouth against the um, the substrate, you know, and pushing the substrate around like a shit, like he like he's plowing with snow. I'm like, oh hell no. Nah. Never seen a fish throw a temper tantrum. That's when I realized that fish actually do have personalities. And that was a long time, over a decade ago. So if y'all haven't realized this yet, fish 100 percent has personalities. You just gotta sit there and spend some time with your fish, watch them, see what they're doing, why they're doing it, things like that. It'd be a method to the madness. And that's why fish are my favorite animal. Um, you know, very underrated. A lot of people that's not in the fish hobby like us, they don't understand this. They think that you just have a glass box with fish swimming around and they're just, you know, it's cruel and all this stuff. But when you create an ecosystem, a habitat for your fish, and they're actually thriving and you see enrichment and things like that, they do a lot of things that actually has a purpose. You know what I mean? And for instance, you know, ants have a purpose. Like they all are working for the queen ant. They all have a job. They all have a purpose. Bees, same thing. So it's like, you know, fish, they have a purpose. And if you set up your 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 enclosure, your aquarium in a way to where you're able to actually see that and enjoy that, that's the best thing you could do. You know, it's nothing like it. You know, that's how I get lost staring at my aquarium for hours. You know what I mean? Because I'm just watching what they do. They're not just swimming back and forth for it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. All right. All right. Royal Constrictor, you said the Dovi. Okay. Okay. At least that, that's one of them. That's one of the tops. I think the only true way to know if a fish can go with another group of aggressive fish is to just try it. And then even if it don't work, it may be a certain fish. Either fish has a different personality. Yeah, Cody. Um, and yeah, but again, um, trial and error. You know, that's facts. Um, the reason why I came up and I'm pretty sure a lot of people that kind of like threw their opinions in on this is people like me that have gone through the trial and error and have done this repeatedly. You know, when you repeatedly do something for over a decade, it's no longer it's just a fish and a personality. Like I could tell anybody 
how to keep an, how to keep a dovi with other fish. I can tell anybody how to keep a buddy cough rye with other fish. I will 100% guarantee that I will always give you a situation where you're able to keep these top aggressive fish together. Usually when somebody has a complaint, not from me, but when they have a complaint about this fish killing this fish or, you know, this fish was, was bullying this fish. It's always fish that should have been together in the first place. You know what I mean? It's always fish that should have been together in the first place. So, um, you know, and then somebody say, oh, I had blood, I had blood pairs with, with this fish and this fish. Well, that's the problem. You know, that's the problem. First of all, blood pairs might be a little aggressive, but their mouth is so small, they cannot even compete with other large aggressive cichlids. You know what I'm saying? It's not about just aggression. Mouth size matters. Teeth matters. Oscars have a very large mouth, but their teeth are so small, they don't cause any damage. If you look at a red devil teeth, they have teeth that you can see. If you look at a dovi teeth, their teeth get big enough to even like grab. You know what I mean? So it's levels to this, and you have to understand that. And after keeping all of these cichlids, like I said, I'm a cichlid lover. Like I love cichlids. The dovi is my favorite fish, period, hands down. Even though I said it's not the most aggressive. And that's why I feel like they have a lot of, they have a stigma behind their name. They have a terrible reputation. But the Dovi is my favorite fish, period. Freshwater, saltwater, it doesn't matter. That's my favorite fish. I will always own a Dovi. That being said, I wish that more people knew how to keep them correctly, even with other fish, so they don't feel like that they only got to keep them by themselves, which is like, to me, very fucking cruel. Fish want to interact with other fish. But just stop putting these fish with fish that can't even be on a level with them. Like you're not gonna put a pit bull in a in a in a in a in a, in a uh, pen with a with a lion, right? They're both aggressive, aggressive as hell. Who was gonna dominate the lion? Now, if you putting, you know, if you got a lion and a tiger and a fucking gorilla, and you know what I'm saying, like all oh, this is aggressive, apex predators, and you probably will have a better situation than you would if you just say, I'm about to put this lion with this pit bull, with this canine, with this, you know what I'm saying, with this cheetah, you know what I'm saying, with the hyena, it's going to be a lion every single time. So, you know, that's probably not a great analogy, but I think that y'all get what I'm trying to say when I'm saying that make sure that you have the correct tank parameters, correct tank mates for these aggressive fish, and I 100% guarantee the outcome would not be what you originally thought it would be. That's a fucking fact. It's a fucking fact. Um, oh, Zach, you said that was a female. Now just imagine a male buddy. Yeah, I got two male buddies. I got two male buddies, man. They they huge. They huge. 12 inches plus. Huge. My That's one of my oldest fish I have. I've had them for like five years. And uh, he's good in there. He's good. Maxed out. Maxed out size. Um, I just bought a 40-gallon Aquatop Reef. All in one tank yesterday. Congrats, Jane. Congrats, congrats. Do I recommend the Neptune system for dosing and monitoring parameters? It's my first saltwater tank. Um, you know, uh, for as dosing, um, if you're going to keep corals, you do want to dose. If you want to keep corals, you do want to dose. And the Neptune system, I'm not quite sure what the Neptune system is. But for dosing, you just got to figure out what your corals need and then just add it accordingly. So just find out, um, you know, trace elements. That's one. Magnesium. That's another one. Calcium. That's another one. Um, strodium. It's a, it's a lot. There's some names that I can't even pronounce. But let me see what the Neptunes. You said the Neptune system. Let me see what that is. For dosing. Let me see. Oh no! If you want to, if you want to buy that, if you want to buy that, I'll never recommend that to anybody. And that's no, that's no shot at Neptune's. But I don't know if this is the one that you were talking about. Hopefully, it's not. Hopefully, you're looking at. Hopefully, we're looking at a, a smaller version. The first one that popped up was that one right there for thirty two hundred. Thirty-one fifty. I hope that's not the one you're talking about. Hopefully, you're possibly talking about the one from like bulk resupply. That's uh, that's three eighty. So what this is is you got the outlets on the bottom, right? 
and then you got the let me uh, zoom in so from what i gather you got of course just the plugs down below you got these right here which go into that's four different uh four different chemicals so you'll only have four different chemicals you got the controller right there it's probably this one again i don't really know this system you got the shut off and on switch up top and then you got whatever the apex is so basically you could hook up five different um chemicals to this and it's going to auto dose your aquarium so um it just takes off the um you doing it manually if you want to get that that's there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing wrong with that um but if you don't mind just go into your tank while you're looking at your tank every day you know what i mean i don't know if you're gonna have your lights automated well when you go look at the tank just go ahead and just pour the solution in you know so you don't have to you could do it like that or you could get you one of those systems the only problem is is that if you have more than four chemicals got to go in you might need a second one. So it goes from it only being, you know, what was that? It goes from only being 380 to now you're paying, you know, close to 800 bucks. You know what I mean? Now you're paying 760. So you just got to be careful. Just got to be careful. You know, 760 to dose your aquarium, it's not worth it to me. I feel like I would rather just go and pour it in. You know what I mean? Right on the bottle. You know how often it is. So you say on a bottle like how I do um, Mondays, this one, Tuesdays, this one. Or if it's every four days for some, which I got those once, so, you know, Mondays and Fridays. Right. The, put the M, put the F. You know what I'm saying? If the calcium, usually if it's every day, you know, just every day on there. You know what I mean? Write that on that so you don't forget. And um, just put it in your phone. You know what I mean? Just put just put in your a reminder in your phone to dose your aquarium. Um, that's if you want to save a little bit of money, you know, but if you don't mind spending that money on that, go for it. It's definitely going to help. All right. Where we at? Where we at? You bought 40 pounds of Caribbean pink Fiji sand. That's nice. Then 25 pounds of live rock. I'm waiting until money to pick up the live rock to get started. Yeah, I'm happy for you. I'm really happy for you. That's amazing. That is 100% amazing. Aloy, hit the like button, guys. Yeah, yeah, y'all, make sure y'all hitting that like button. Hit that like button. When y'all come into the chat, not only hit the like button, but make sure y'all make sure y'all answer that question. I've been doing a lot of talking, but I want I want y'all to answer that question. Um, in y'all opinion, red tails, hold on, hold on. Somebody asked about the red tail. George need a huge tank and eat a ton for red tail. I cannot stand red tails. Oh, that's why. Michael Richardson. I would like to get a baby red tail catfish. Are they hard to keep? Michael. Michael, Michael, Michael. Red tail catfish get four feet, my man. They get four feet or bigger, my man. Um, I feel like red tail catfish should be a restricted species. Um. You know, it's, they're just tank busters. If you have plans on setting up, what's adequate for for a red tail catfish? Y'all tell me what y'all think is adequate for a red tail catfish. In my opinion, I've seen red tail catfish in 15,000 gallons at predatory fins, and they look like they needed more space. And that's huge. The only person, only people on YouTube that's properly keeping these red tail catfish is Ohio Fish Rescue, and they have a 56,000-gallon pond. So understand that when you buy red tail catfish, you're getting a fish that can potentially, and more often than not, get up to four feet. Now, that could be a death sentence, or that could be a situation where you might have to release it back to the wild, or you might have to call up Ohio Fish Rescue and say, hey, come get my catfish. You know what I mean? So, you know, they look nice. You could get some different ones that don't get that big. You could get something that gets, you know, three feet max if you really want to get something like that. But four foot and bigger, you know, 80 pounds, 90 pounds, you know, just understand what you're in for. 
You know what I mean? But I don't recommend anybody buy one of them if you don't plan on setting up something that's 20,000 gallons or bigger. And I hope that's not that's not making anybody that own one feel bad. I'm definitely not trying to make you feel bad. I just want you to understand that it is a very large undertaking to buy the red tail catfish. You know what I mean? I hope that y'all are not the kind of people that buy them and say, when it get big, I'm going to figure out what to do with it, man. Like, you know, if you're going to buy a fish, make sure that you're able to keep it for life. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we got to do as fish keepers. If less people were releasing these fish back to the wild, we could probably own the things like that we want to own. Like, I would love to own a snakehead. In some place, they could own snakehead. They can't afford it. They can't in California. You know, we can't own piranha out here. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of fish that I would love to own. And that's probably because in the past somebody owned them and released it into the wild and they don't have no, they don't have any predators, any natural predators. You know what I'm saying? So in the end, they end up killing off all of, you know, our native fish. So, you know, just make sure that you're able to keep your fish for the long haul and please understand what you plan on getting. And Zach, thank you very much for commenting on that. Thank you very much. And I we we on the same page, Zach. We on the same damn page. Michael, we have a 25-pound blue catfish, and he eats a lot of food. So make sure before you get a red tail, you can foot the bill for the food in the pond space. Co uh, so Michael says he has a 2,000-gallon pond. It's not big enough, buddy. It's not big enough. It's not big enough, Michael. It's not. Temporarily, yes. Four or five feet, man. It's not big enough. Don't do it. And I don't really like any short. Cody says, I don't really like any short bodies. We're on the same page. Uh, but a short body phantom red tail looks pretty good. Yeah, I, all of them are in the same boat to me. All of them are in the same boat. The gars, the catfish, it's fucking terrible, man. Um, how's your experience with red tears? Red tears. Red terrors. I have a female red terror. Remember, you know, she built with my dovi, so that's why I got all of those uh all of those hybrids in there. So I have probably still about a hundred, maybe about a hundred uh dovi feste hybrid. The feste is the red terror. I like the females. The males don't really look as good. Um, they're not they're aggressive though. If we're talking about aggressive level, they're aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Um but I really loved I really loved the female red tear. Also, uh, just like how I love the female red tiger motoguins. Absolutely beautiful. The colors pop. Amazing looking fish. Cody said, "Hey, Cody. The thing is, though, you fat you you caught your catfish though. So you know what I mean. And that that blue pie, I wouldn't have left it in. I wouldn't have left it where I caught it either. I would have had to bring it home, right?" So that's a little bit different than actually footing the bill, buying something and knowing what you're getting yourself into. You would have had different preparation, right? So we're talking about, Michael, that wants to actually go and buy that red tail catfish. So if you're going to buy it, just understand at some point you're going to have to buy the biggest pond you will ever think you would ever need. The biggest one. So think about the biggest one you plan on getting and double, triple, quadruple that. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, 20, look at predatory fence. Look at the predatory fence old videos, you know, and they had that 15,000 gallon pond and um, they had a couple air pine in there as well. The fish looks small. That's why they want to go bigger than that. The fish looks small. That's 15,000 gallons. Then also look at Ohio Fish Rescue. I'm over here shouting out channels, getting them some views. Go check out Ohio Fish Rescue. They have a 56,000 gallon pool that they converted to a pond inside of their back house. It's a fish house now. And you'll see how big some of those red tails are. They have the red tail with tiger shoving those hybrids in there over four foot. And then they got those extra large red tail catfish. Like I said, if you ever want to know how big some of these fish get, check them out. Those boys over there, they got super large tanks and extra large fish. You know, so check them out. Luigi, what's up, Luigi Red Devil and Zebra Tilapia, Tilapia Buddy Cough Rod. You on point, you on point, my guy. You on point, we here, yeah, we here, we here. We agree with that. 
We agree on the same thing. Okay. Cody, yes, yeah. Yeah, that's two. When we buy as a house, I hope to have a minimum of 5,000. Yeah, Cody, I'm so glad to hear that you're at least thinking about 5,000 gallons or bigger. Yes, sir. Glad to hear that. Zach, Buddy Crawford, just unique, strong jaws, designed to crush hard shells, blunt teeth, but they're thick and strong. I've been bitten by my male Jaguar in Texas, but never took a chance with the Buddy. Yeah, Zach. Yeah, Zach. It's, it's, like I said, they are, the Buddy Crawford is one insane fish. Like, you'll be looking at that fish just constantly just, you know, doing what it doing. You be like, man, this motherfucker is just, you know, it, it's, it's really, it's really an insane fish. You know, when he was attacking my Oscar, obviously years ago, I don't take that chance no more. But when he was attacking my Oscar, like the Oscar is just, you know what I'm saying, sitting in the corner. You know what I mean, trying not to even, you know, be in the water, like fin out, eye out. You know what I'm saying, half the body out the water. And he's just, he got the whole tank, and he's still going back over to him, just do his thing. Go back over to him, just like wasn't even thinking. It wasn't even a thought. He just like just, just it was almost like it was his nature to go and kill, you know, go and kill or or attack, you know, a submissive fish. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 on another level for sure. Definitely on another level. World constrictor. I'm in, I'm in complete agreement on that, bro. Don't like nor appreciate the foreign fish. Just want mine's all natural, please. Yep. Yep, we on the same page. Definitely on the same page. Hey, y'all, we got three other people inside this chat. I know we could get the chat, get the uh, likes up to 34. At least let these uh, three more people go and hit this like button. People coming and going. But make sure y'all are one of the ones that's hitting that like button for me one time, please. The Red Jewel Cichlid. Okay, David, the Red Jewel Cichlid. We talking about a African cichlid? Yeah. Detroit RB, I have a Texas, and he has a fit sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The Texas cichlids are no joke. I'm going to have to go down to the bottom, y'all. I'm over here way behind, man. I want to catch up. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm about to catch up, man. I got to – if I missed y'all comment, I apologize. You know, I'm. A, I, we could get back to it. Um, but ask again. Ask again because I need to get to the bottom. I'm definitely way behind. All right, Luigi, TriMac crazy aggressive. I've never owned a TriMac. I have never been able to find a TriMac. Never been able to find a TriMac. I got somebody that was supposed to shoot me one. I hope he uh, hope he still does. He's coming up out of Hawaii. I hope that happens. I know a couple other people that mentioned that they could possibly get me one, so I hope that does happen. But, yeah, I would love to get a, a TriMac. Five-star general H. Fasciatus version. I know. I know you, you probably talking about, that, talking about that video Zeus, huh? Yeah, man. I, that made me want to get a um, a, um, a five-star general. But it's hard to find the one that he got. It's hard to find the one that they got. That was a nice one. Uh, now you got to check out King and Queens. Chancho Cichlid. I used to watch King. Zach, I used to watch King and Queens and uh, that Chancho. Um, what the hell was their chancho? Yeah, what the hell was a chancho? Their chancho cichlid. I think that was a damn name. But um, yeah, I used to watch King and Queen cichlids. You know, as you know, they don't even put videos out no more. Let's see what the chancho cichlid is. Yeah, it's an amphilopus. It's an amphilopus chancho cichlid. They're not. They're not that aggressive. They're aggressive, but they're not. They're not on a level of a dovi or. Or uh, might be in a level as like a like a like a red devil for sure, yeah. And what's the name got the um, got you got the um, Chantro Cichlid as well, Andy Woods. So yeah, I might I might look into getting one of those. You you I forgot all about those. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you, man. Hell yeah, I won't forget that. Thank you, Zach. All right, all right. Asian Red Tails territorial. Yeah, I had an Asian red tail. He disappeared inside the 800 gallon pond. I don't know what happened to him. I think somebody ate him. He was like 12 inches. Trimac be attacking for no reason. Man, I wish I could get my hands on a Trimac. 
Ortega, I was wondering if I could use an instant ocean hydrometer to test salinity of water change. Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, 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 yeah. The hydrometer, you're talking about the one with the little... I started off with that. Let me make sure that uh, we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I started off with one of those too. But instead of getting that, so yeah, I started off with that. The thing is, sometimes they got to be calibrated. You know what I'm saying? Like you make sure that when you're done using it, you uh you rinse it out with some with some um, RODI water so you don't keep no salt in there and you don't get an um, inaccurate reading. But before you, it's the highest one you're talking about, right? Sure. But instead of that, just go ahead and get your refractometer, man. Just get that. Just get that refractometer. You'll 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 appreciate that a bit more. I would suggest get that one instead. All right, Luigi Green. I had a three. I had a wild three inch trimac. Got it before Cichlid of America stopped selling recently. Man, yeah, you won. You won. Mickey Singer, Red Devil. Yep, 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 yep. My three inch trimac. The boss of my three inch Red Devils and Midas. But they're all small. They're all small. The hierarchy is going to change. Like I said, my red Texas is smashing on everything inside of that um, 180. But once those red dovi get bigger, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Uh, I miss Jeff Raps tangled up in the cichlids back in the day. Used to deal with Jeff before he started that business way back in the mid-90s. I was ordering dovi and umbies and Trimax cichlids. Good times. Man. Okay. Okay. I wish I would. I wish uh, there was somebody else that was getting down like Jeff. Chancho is the biggest amphilopus. The, the biggest amphilopus. Okay, okay, okay. Luigi Green, I think you. I uh, think you kind of sold me. I need to get the mail though. I need to get the mail. So I'm gonna look into the Chancho. Let me make sure I don't forget that. Let me make sure I don't forget that. Now I need that Chancho. Where could I get one from anyway? Let me see. I really, I really be trusting um, Imperial Tropicals, but so far, tell me if any of y'all have ordered from any of these spots. We got the Wet Spot Tropical Fish, right? The Wet Spot Tropical Fish. Oh, that's not, that's terrible. Damn, y'all, my bad. Oh, shit, that's not going to work. Whatever. But anyway, I'm going to tell you the name. Natural Environment Aquatics. And that's that's it. That's it. If y'all know the site where I could possibly get a Chancho cichlid, you'll see one on the channel soon. I want one now. Definitely want one. Edaway Beast, yeah, 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 man, my guy, man, what's up, what's up? Yeah, I was just talking about. I hope that I could get those trimax from you. Yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. That's who I was talking about, y'all. He said he got some trimax for me, a nice pair. So we got still need to get them. Zach, like I say Chantros are just above red dovies, but just below dovi. I think Trimax are the most aggressive Amphilophus species, though. Yeah, man, I definitely got to find out, man. I got to find out. I need one. I need one. I need a, I need a Chantro now, and I definitely need the Trimac. I got to have a Trimac. The West Bot is a good store online. Thank you. I trust I trust that you wouldn't steer me wrong. I I'm definitely gonna uh, check them out. I'm gonna check them out. I'm gonna check them out. I need, I need, I need one of those chanchos. Most aggressive um, African cichlid. I don't know. I don't know. Well, lucky, how you doing? Okay, Ortega. I got the Petco refractometer, but I'm not sure how to calibrate it. The only thing I have is RODI water. So what I would do, I would just. Slap the RODI in there, see what the reading is. It should read zero. You know what I'm saying? And then go from there. It seems like it would be calibrated. Um, I might be wrong, but that's kind of like what I go off of. If I haven't, you know, if I haven't used mine in a minute, I'll make sure I hit it with some RODI. It's supposed to come up zero. You know what I'm saying? And then I go from there. But yeah, that, that refractometer is what you, you definitely want. Ortega, Cody, I send you a pick of a 75 pound. Catfish, my grandpa called today, and his biggest yet is in your messenger. I'm going to check that out when we get off. 
I'm gonna check that out, man. I'm gonna check that out. Cause I use I use that phone. Let me see if I can use this phone now. But yeah, 75 pounds, 71 pounds. Shh. Caught a little person. Caught a little, man, you caught a little person. Damn. Damn, Pawpaw for sure on point. Yeah. That's what's up. That's something to be proud of right there. Come on now. Let's see. Let's see. I don't want to do all that. Come on. Let me see their messages. Okay. Can you put... So Lucky asks, can I put Pothos inside the filter tied to 75? Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go, Cody. Ooh. Look at Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, man. Cody, can I show can I show the chat? I don't want to just be showing off your family like that, but can I show the chat, Cody? Man, that's what's up. Ooh, that's what's up. Woo. All right. Check it out, y'all. That's Cody's grandpa holding a 71-pound catfish that he caught today. God. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. That's amazing. Man. Damn. That's amazing, man. It's uh, that's that's you know, I'm I'm really happy that you're still able to share those kind of moments with your grand with your grandpa, man. That's that's what's up, man. You know, I know you. I know you cherish that, and I know you value it, and I know damn well he values that. That's that's amazing, man. That's good. I'm really happy for you. All right. So as far as that that that, uh, that tie to 75, I'm not quite sure what filter that is. I don't really have those. I got the aqua clears, but I don't see why you couldn't. Let's see. I don't see why you couldn't. Let me see what that looked like, though. Uh, yeah, you should be able to. But understand that those roots are going to grow all through your mechanical media. It's not going to just, you know what I mean? If you want to put, like, lava rock in there instead of, that, of the, um, the media that you got in there and then put the plants in there, you can. Because if you have whatever kind of cartridges in there, the roots are going to just start growing through the media anyway. So it's going to be extremely hard. To clean your cartridge, you're gonna have to cut the roots, you know. So yeah, you could though. Oreo constricted cleaner. I believe that you will like enjoy Trimax Cichlids, another big, boisterous, and beautiful Central American cichlid. Deep red eye. World constrictor. What the hell is a deep red eye? I don't, I'm not familiar with that one. Deep red. I sickly man. I hope you just taught me something new. What? Can't find that. Are you? We talking about it? We talking about an African cichlid? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Or are you talking about that's what the trimax have? They do got. They do got red eyes though. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. They you talking about that? They have the red eyes. Yeah, man. Yeah. If y'all don't know what the trimax cichlid is, I'm gonna show you this picture because I gotta have one. Look at this beautiful fish. Look at that beautiful fish, y'all. Golden, red eye on that joint. Look at that. An amazing specimen. Gotta get one. Gotta get one. All right, Zach, yeah, Chancho Mills, top out at 18 inches. Trimac Mills at 16. Yeah, I gotta have I gotta have a couple of them. That's why I don't get bored with the hobby. That's why I don't get bored with this hobby, because there's always a fish. That I feel like I have to have. I haven't even owned all the fish that I've ever wanted to own. Some I got them, and I'm like, you know what I mean. Sometimes it's just extremely hard to grow some of these fish out, you know. And some of them you just, you know, like the green terrors. I, I love green terrors, but I got terrible luck with them. The electric blue jack Dempsey. Something always happens. I got four. I still got four. So hopefully I'm able to grow one of those out. But you know, I uh, finally got my red dovi. I wanted one of those. Need that Trimac. Now I want the Chancho. Yeah. All right. Hip to West Point in Oregon. Reezy, what's good? What's good, Reezy? How you doing? 
Man, I'm doing good, man. The night is good. The night is good, man. The night is good. Week was good. I got, I got, I got my son out here. You know what I mean? I know in the last chat I was talking about how he was drifting off, but he was working with me all week, so I'm happy about that. Showing him the business, and um, yeah, he seems to, you know, bump his head enough times to where he's on. He's trying to get on track. So I'm, I'm, I'm humble, thankful. You know what I mean? Definitely feel blessed about that. So. You know, the week the week went real good. How about yours, Reezy? How everything went with you? All right, Lucky. I have a 75-gallon African cyclic tank. I want to put pothos in a tank, which is the best way for the pothos, which, what is, which is the best way for the pothos in the tank. Just hang them in the top. Just hang them in the top. Let the top let the uh, let the leaves stick out. You know what I'm saying. Hopefully they don't mess with the roots. But if they do, you know, the plants could still survive. You could also throw make a little um, above the tank little filter. Get you a nice planter box. Plumb it in. Hook up a pump. Put some lava rock in there. The water will go through one side, come out the other side. That might be the best way. But if you don't want that eyesore, just 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 stick it inside the tank. You know, just stick to just stick to uh. The plant inside the tank. Let the roots hang in there. The roots will go ahead and drift down and go into the sand and everything. It'll find its way to the sand. Yeah, man. Yep, 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 yep. Michael, yeah, for sure. Grandpa did his thing. Yeah. Yep. Definitely was like a little person. Ortega, I was wondering if you knew any suggestions for any enemies. I have a pair of clownfish and a blini. Ortega, I'm sorry, I've never owned an anemone personally. Uh, correction, I bought one, and it 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 basically never got comfortable. And so, if y'all don't know, anemones, you put them in one spot and they move to another spot. They move to where they're comfortable at. Sometimes they move behind the rock work. They can move to the glass. They can move to the sand. They don't always just stay in one spot. You know what I mean? And that's the problem when you have other corals because they'll move next to a coral, sting your coral, kill the coral. Um, but I had one anemone ever in my life, and it never got comfortable. So um, it kept moving around until it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it, you know, it died. You know, um, so um, I haven't bought an anemone since. I haven't bought any anemone since then. But uh, a lot of anemones get big. Understand that they get very large. Carpet anemones, bubble tip anemones, they look kind of cool. But those tips, you know, those bubble tips kind of like straighten out and they get these long tentacles and they get very large. So just make sure that you have a large tank if you want to have an enemy, because otherwise that's all you're going to be able to keep in there. Just, um, you know, your fish and an enemy you won't be able to get any other corals. So just make sure you're aware of that. But I don't I can't really just tell you which one will be the best one. I would say a small one. I would start with that. I would try to find an enemy that don't get that large. You know, maybe six inches in diameter, you know, and uh, go from there. That's that's the best advice I could give you. Uh, hey, the Trimax is where you get the red eyes and some flower horns. Yeah. Yep, I heard that. I heard that. I have a I have bad luck with green tears, too. I have a male and female currently doing okay, fingers crossed. Yeah, Luigi, you're doing better than me. I don't know what it is about the green tears. I don't know what it is about the green tears, but yeah, I'm glad that you're able to successfully keep some. Um, I had a Trimax be built robust as hell too. Facts, facts. The ones that I've seen, like um, I think it was Andy Woods, and I've seen a couple of YouTubers with them over the years, and they were definitely thick, healthy looking fish. You know, it's, I don't know why, I can't believe that I've never seen one ever out here in California. I just can't believe that. I go to so many different pet stores. I mean, I've been to at least, and I've probably been to about 50 different pet stores up and down the Bay Area. I mean, all the way, I live in Sacramento now, but even when I wasn't living in Sacramento, when I was in San Jose, I would travel two and a half hours away. Like even now, I'll go two and a half hours away to a, to a pet store, and in between there and here, I've gone to almost all of them, and I've never, ever seen a Trimac. Never seen one. I just, I, I don't understand why they are so hard to find. Uh, Ortega, do you know how saltwater tanks 
were back in the day? No. How were they? Royal Constrictor. Man, I don't even know that. <laughs> I can't even pronounce that. Bro. I can't even pronounce that. Uh, very large, active, and aggressive African cichlid. Largest, longest known cichlid. Real mean when they get over a foot. I don't know if I want. I'm going to take a picture. That. I'm going to take a look at that. Um, I don't know if I want one that's like that, though. Because, you know, I got OB cichlids in there. And I don't want to have a African cichlid that's so big and, 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 and destructive that all of a sudden I can't really have you know the fish in there that I have in there. I don't. I definitely don't want to do that. I right, fifteen Luigi and fifteen inch red devil versus fifteen inch zebra tilapia. Who y'all got? Buddy Coughry. Buddy Coughry. Anybody else want to want to chime in on that? A fifteen. First, I've never seen a fifteen inch red devil. Let me say that. But a fifteen inch red devil, or you know, and even a zebra tilapia only get twelve inches. So let's just say. 12-inch Red Devil, 12-inch Zebra Tilapia, which one's going to win? The zebra, the zebra Tilapia's mouth is way bigger than the Red Devil. Way bigger than the Red Devil. I'm taking the Buddy Coughry on that. Facts. I've actually had, I had a, uh, man, matter of fact, well, the Zebra Tilapia wasn't big enough to try to compete with him, but I had a 12-inch, um, had a 12-inch Red Devil or 12-inch Midas Cichlid. In my 125 in the apartment, and I had that same buddy cough ride, and he had to have been like eight inches. He wasn't able to smash the um the uh, the minus wasn't able to smash on my buddy cough ride. He wasn't smashing. Nope. Was it James? Okay. Buddy all day. Zach on point. Buddy all day. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay, Pooh Bear, I have a gorgeous orange red devil, adult male, 12 inches, blimpy. Okay, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Red devils are beautiful fish. I love how red devils come, into, come in so many different colors, you know what I mean? I don't really like just the plain orange ones. I like the ones that's, you know, tri-color, you know, two-color at least. Yeah, All right, I got a question. The pie ball that's eating filet of tilapia, but should we buy a pair of farm raised and breathe them for food? Or would you select, suggest buying the filet? I'm comfortable filet fish, but I don't know. Well, that's a great question, Cody. So the problem with always feeding them the filet is that there's no vitamins. It's almost zero nutritional value. You know what I'm saying? So I would, if you don't mind, if you don't want, you know, I would probably grow some out. You know what I mean? Or... You could um, soak the filet in some kind of vitamin. But again, that's going to get a little, you know. Um, you could buy the silver sides instead of the tilapia. That's that's like full fish, whole fish, so it has something in the gut. Um, but you need to figure out a way to get, get, that, get that fish some vitamins. You know what I mean? The nutrients that it needs to actually, you know, have a good sustainable life because – as you know, there's absolutely zero nutritional value in those in those fillets. You know, um, that's the that's the problem. That's the problem with the tilapia fillets. They're readily available, but you know, there's no nutrients in that. One, it's, a, it's just a fillet. Two, so it does so it's not the gut of what the fish ate. And two, uh, you know, these tilapias we farm raised. You know what I mean? So there's no telling. They just try to grow them up quick so they can hurry up and you know put them in the stores. So just make sure that you're getting that fish some vitamins. So Grow your own or, or, or figure out a way to get some vitamins, you know, to that fish. George, I have three balloon, balingi, baleen chromis. I don't even know how to pronounce that. All I was doing the 2003 NYC blackout. Yeah, I'm going to look that up. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I think that's what, I think that's what uh, World Constrictor was trying to write out. But yeah, uh, maybe easier to just buy. Yeah, Zach, like, I like that versus tried it twice already. Fish were sub adults, both trials. Trimax will. But Dovi was not stopper and limitless. The Trimax would eventually tire, and the Dovi wouldn't. 
Yeah, um, that's what I was saying. The doe vine is definitely, you know, a lot more aggressive than a lot of fish. You know what I mean? In a fight, so I had my doe vine and my buddy Carl Fry in the 240. They used to fight all the time. They used to fight, hell, they used to fight all the time in my 125. And it would, one would win sometimes, the other one would win another time. You know what I mean? Like, it was times where I had to separate the buddy because the buddy was winning. You know, it was times when I had to take the dovi out. It was times when the dovi got beat up by that buddy and I had to remove the dovi and bring the dovi back to hell. It was times that the dovi beat up the buddy and I had to take the buddy out and bring him back to hell. So, you know, those two are two, like I said, are top aggressive, one and two. But, you know, the dovi has allowed passes to more fish than the buddy cough fry has. You know, there's certain fish that the that my dovi didn't like. Before I lost my big dovi, he was going after Kobe for some reason. All of a sudden, he didn't like Kobe. Um, and then he used to always, my dovi used to always fight Red Skull, which was my 16-inch red out of that Pope Pike. Uh, meanwhile, you know, the buddy wasn't really tripping on nobody, but, you know, but the dovi didn't really like him. And then, um, you know, if I put in anybody else, if I put in there the Jaguar, problem with that. If I put in there my Oscar, Problem with that. If I put in there my flower worm, it's a problem. So it's just certain ones. It's just certain ones. Zach, my female buddy was 11.5 inches and six years old when she passed. Woke up to her land on her side and it looked like something poked her overnight and she or she injured herself, didn't make and didn't make it. Sorry to hear that, Zach. Sorry to hear that. Um as far as the buddy cough ride getting 18 inches, there's nothing on even online that say they get 18 inches. Um, I've had my buddy cough ride for five years, and he's only about 12 inches. And like I said, max size, standard length. I mean, I guess if you get lucky, but the buddy cough ride only gets 12 inches. Um, but, you know, what do I know? I can only go off my experience. And so I haven't had one that got that big, never seen one that big or anything like that. Uh, yeah, Royals, that's a good point. Nobody plotting and planning. They take a loss and bounce back easy. Yeah, it was a strategy. All right. Uh, thoughts on feeding, who bear? Thoughts on feeding frozen blood worms to cichlids. I think that if you're trying to get your fish to eat, that's fine. But long term, it creates issues. It's a treat. So you don't want to constantly feed your 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 fish, you know, brine shrimp, blood worms, mice, any of that. You know what I'm saying? To keep them alive, yeah, go for it. But long term, you're going to end up having to make sure that they're getting some vitamins and, you know, getting some variety in their diet. Uh been out the hobby since she passed. Plan to get back into it though. Just not sure when. I'm currently in transition. I'm about to relocate and just broke my two tanks down just over a month ago. I was keeping South American kerosens. Okay, okay, world constrictor. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, I've been on for about an hour and 14 minutes, y'all. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, and wrap this on up. It was a definitely an interesting talk with y'all. I enjoyed it, learned some things. I got to look up that chancho. I'm going to try to figure out a way to get that trimac. So I definitely appreciate all of the contribution that y'all have done in the topic. And um, y'all have a great night. Be blessed, be safe. And I'm going to catch y'all on the next live. Peace.